It has been 10 years since Eric Garner died at the hands of police. His death led to protests here and across the country. Today, CBS 2's Natalie Dudres was on Staten Island at a memorial, speaking with his family who were still seeking justice. Thinking about what happened 10 years ago. Eric Garner's mother, Gwen Carr, says she remembers it like yesterday. On July 17th, 2014, her son, 43 year old Eric Garner, was allegedly selling loose cigarettes on Bay Street in Staten Island when cell phone video shows police trying to arrest him, holding him down. Garner said, I can't breathe 11 times before he died. He said he couldn't breathe, then get up. Get off of him. No racist police. Still trying to turn their pain into purpose a decade later, family, friends, and supporters marched from Staten Island's Borough Hall to a street renamed Eric Garner Way, steps from where he was killed. Holding a memorial barbecue. Probably he lost his life. That's the question still coming up. Garner's death was ruled a homicide, and authorities determined NYPD officer Daniel Pantaleo used a banned chokehold to restrain him. But Officer Pantaleo was never charged. It sparked nationwide protests. He was eventually fired five years later, but the other officers who responded were not. I think that charges should have been brought. The family says they also want to focus on the happier times and celebrate his life. I miss my son, of course, and I'm just um, so glad to have so many supporters that still stay, stands with me. And Garner's children and grandchildren have picked up the fight. They helped push the Eric Garner and Anti Chokehold Act in 2020. I Can't Breathe also became a rallying cry for the Black Lives Matter movement to call out police brutality. I can't breathe. The Garner family says they'll continue to march year after year so his death is not forgotten. On Staten Island, Natalie Dudridge, CBS 2 News. And this week I sat down with Garner's mother, Gwen Carr, to discuss her life and work in the 10 years since Eric's death. You can watch part two of our conversation tonight on CBS 2 News at 11.